Welcome to 900 miles of epic off-roading as we hit the Wyoming BDR. Now, this trail was designed for adventure bikes and we're gonna be the first ones ever in a full-size vehicle, including a trailer, to complete the route, or at least we're gonna try. This trail has rocks, water crossings, snow, mud, ice, wildlife, and every type of terrain imaginable. Now join us as we head through Wyoming from Colorado to the Montana border. We actually kicked things off yesterday in Bags, Wyoming, about two and a half miles north of the Colorado border. Well, things haven't gone smooth since then. We lost footage from yesterday on a corrupt memory card, and we woke up this morning to a beautiful view, but were attacked by the largest bugs we've ever seen. So it's time to get packed up and get things started. Now BDR stands for Backcountry Discovery Route. These are created for adventure bikes, as I'd mentioned earlier. Now, if you go to ridebdr.com, you'll find routes that have been developed in 11 different states. The fact that it was designed for adventure bikes means all the different points along the way, and there's eight different sections in this case, are designed around how far motorcycles can go without having to get fuel. Well, definitely in a vehicle like ours, we can go a lot further. So we're gonna share some tips and things that we learned along the way if you're gonna use an off-road vehicle like this rather than a motorcycle. As I mentioned before, we are the first non-adventure bike or off-road vehicle like this to do the route outside of the guys on adventure bikes. The trail was announced in early 2022 and we had to wait until July to see reports coming in that the trail was fully open and free from snow. We hit the trail beginning on July 1st of 2022 and we scheduled eight days to make the journey. Well, we hope it's gonna be enough. Now, technically, this is our day two being on the trail. Yesterday, we started in bags, like I mentioned before, and we went straight to this campsite, which was probably less than an hour on that first day. Now things have not gone very smooth. As you heard me talk earlier, we lost footage from a corrupt memory card with our introduction and footage from bags. We got attacked by mosquitoes that could carry away small children, and we lost our roto packs somewhere along the way. If you look on the spare tire, you can see our roto packs are missing. But not only is it the cost of the mounts and two roto packs, that's six gallons of fairly expensive gas that somebody else probably picked up on the trail. Fortunately, we have two five gallon jerry cans full of gas in the trailer, so we're still good to go. Now, so far, the trail has been very, very easy and expected because they were listed as easy sections. But there's two sections of the trail, one here and one kind of at the end that are optional expert sections. Well, you know us, if there's a hard section, we're gonna try and hit it. Especially with our Jeep and our Tribe trailer, what could possibly go wrong?
Well, from the perspective of the drone shot here, you can't see just how steep this hill is. But trust me, it was pretty steep. And as you see, the Jeep started struggling as we go up. And as the back tire came up to this rock, we slipped and that rock reached right into the tire and ripped off the valve stem. But this is only the beginning of things going wrong today. If there is anything worse than having to change a flat tire, it's got to be having to change a tire in a muddy creek that's full of ice and snow and being eaten alive by gigantic mosquitoes. That, I think, really made this a special experience. Got to flatten a really bad spot. Just working on getting her jacked up and being the tire changed. That's all we can do. Just part of part of being out here and taking care of ourselves. Just making sure we have the right tools and everything to get it done right. We got the old tire off. It's got a broken valve stem. And uh, time to get the new tire on. Okay. So after we got the spare tire done, we decided to come up a different line that looked easier, but it, this this mud is just super, super slick. And if we went off that rock there a little bit, we still don't have any traction. So our only choice now is to use the pole pal and see if this will help get us up the hill here. So it's all hooked up, it's ready to go. Now after two hours of changing the tire, and five winch poles we managed to get up the hill thanks to the pole pal. But this time, the pole pal is so buried, we have to pull the pole pal out of the ground with the Jeep. After making it up that last hill, there was snow drift after snow drift. And once we found ourselves stuck here and it was time to get the winch out, we realized we no longer had the winch controller. We had left it back at the last place, which was almost two miles back. So I start setting everything up while Katarina starts hiking back to find it. But fortunately, some guys on adventure bikes showed up and had our winch controller. And then they went back for Katarina. Now this was not going to be the last time we winched today. A little further up, we got seriously stuck and started digging our way out. Fortunately, some wonderful people from Wyoming showed up in a side-by-side -side, and all four of them had shovels and they got us out fairly quickly. So big shout out to the people that gave us a hand and got us out and took us to our next campsite. After damn near 12 hours, starting with the biggest mosquitoes you've ever seen, losing our rotopacks on the trail, changing a tire in an icy creek, having to do countless winch pulls to get through snow. It was definitely time to call it a night. After waking up to a gorgeous Wyoming morning, we were still debating, maybe it's time to call it quits. Because we even started with losing the trailer keys somewhere. We don't even know where that happened. Then, with all the problems we've had so far, it's really been frustrating. And this is only our second day on the trail. Either way, we still have quite a ways to go before we even hit a main road and can decide whether we want to continue forward or head home. But it's not like things could get any worse, right? Well, look at that, another big snow drift. This one is pretty deep, at least it's fairly compacted. So some creative driving, moving up, pulling back, moving up, pulling back to pack it down should get us through this. Now, one thing I want to make note of is we did not start the trail 
until there were reports from the motorcyclists that the trails were fully open. And there are snow drifts that had no tire tracks to them, meaning, as the guy here, the guys on motorcycles don't stay the trail. They go around anything that gets in their way. We are too big to do that. Well, turns out once we get past this snow drift, there's a much bigger one up ahead. We actually had to turn around and come back through this and take a bypass. And par for the course on this trip, as we came back through this snow drift in the opposite direction, we got stuck again and had to winch ourselves out. After checking the trails, the weather, and the local conditions, we found out that the rest of the day is gonna be at a much lower elevation. So I think we're okay to continue and not have to deal with the snow, but we are gonna to have to contend with some water. And as you can see, this one was up halfway on the axles on our 38 inch tires. Given how our luck has been so far on this trail, we weren't quite sure we should take the Kennedy Peak side trail. It's six and a half miles and it goes up to 10,810 feet. So we were a little bit worried about running into more of that white fluffy stuff, but the trail was clear, the sky was beautiful, and it was well worth the extra time we spent. Well, happy 4th of July, everybody. It is the 4th of July and we are having a blast. Last night, we found a great campsite, set things up, had a nice relaxing evening. Now, if you are going to run the BDR like we did in a Jeep or Toyota or something, you are probably not going to stick to the same timeline that the adventure bikes do. Those routes were really designed with them in mind. You're probably gonna find yourself way off as you get through the trail, which means finding camping spots becomes difficult because they're really set up at the beginning or end of each section. So make sure you have good maps that can tell you where to find good dispersed camping. But I'm gonna be honest with you, since I'm still covered in mud from the first day, we're gonna go into Casper, get a hotel, take a shower, and wash some clothes. It's day number four, and we're leaving out of Alcova and heading up to this next section. Yesterday uh, was the 4th of July. We took a moment to celebrate by going into Casper, getting a hotel for the night, getting a good shower and getting cleaned up. So that was kind of nice. I'm covered in bug bites, my feet are swollen, but we're having a great time. And this, today, we're gonna be around Beaver Rim. And so this is supposed to be some really, really beautiful area. We're looking forward to this one. So stay tuned for some highlights because I think today's gonna be a beautiful day.
Now you will come across a handful of different gates like this. The rule of thumb is, if it's open, you leave it open. If it's closed, you open it, you go through, and you close it behind you. So, please respect that. How this stretch to Beaver Rim is nice and flat, and the road is smooth and sandy, which is perfect for the Jeep. So we're able to make some good time up and get up to this rim and see these amazing views. Uh, the Wyoming BDR truly lives up to its name in Wyoming. Backcountry discovery. You can't put it any better. We are in the middle of nowhere out here. We hardly ever see any other people. We go through towns that have a population in double digits. It really is an awesome place to visit. And we also get to see a lot of wildlife from antelopes to horses. Now, aside from the cool wildlife, the antelopes, horses, and other things, you're bound to run into a lot of cows along the way. This can keep your speed down because they'll just be a herd of them out of nowhere. And these cows just don't give a f I swear, Wyoming has more cows than people. It's just gotta be. There's only 580,000 people in all of Wyoming compared to Colorado that has 5.8 million people. So there's definitely some small towns in Wyoming. Today we had a bunch of fun. Some higher speed stuff in some areas, some a little bit of obstacles. And this is Atlantic City behind me, little uh, kind of historic town, ghost towny area. And now we're getting ready to jump right into the next section of the BDR trail. So we're, our plan right now is to go into the forest, find some place to camp for the night, relax, have some steaks, and really enjoy the evening. So we finished this leg and uh, 
We're almost out of gas too, by the way. So fortunately we have 10 gallons of fuel on the trailer that we can put in if we need to. Supposedly you can ask, they've got a tank of gas down here, but I'm just not gonna deal with it. We're gonna keep going. We'll put the gas in that we have and uh, we'll see how it goes. But beautiful day. We're loving Wyoming. It is absolutely gorgeous, but we gotta keep going before it gets dark and we can find a campsite.